Hi, welcome to Ninja Monkey, I'm Nathan and I make travel videos a lot based around Japan and I love exploring Gibraltar and its surroundings. So if you want a glimpse into what there is to do through the eyes of a local or a tourist, then stay tuned. So the other day a friend asked me if one week in Japan was enough time to visit. My question back to them was, will you have the opportunity to visit again and when? Their answer was probably not because they wanted to start a family and if they did it would be very far in the future. So my answer to their question is, it's better to visit Japan than not to visit Japan, first of all. And the right time to go is when you have the time to go. So I put together this itinerary for them. Yes, a week is not very long. And yes, it would be very tempting just to go to Tokyo. But that wouldn't really be a Japan trip. So I've tried my best to put together what I think is a flexible, albeit predictable itinerary. So here it goes. Arriving at Tokyo, the first day is pretty much free and flexible, allowing for travel disruptions, jet lag, delays, that sort of thing. So I'm not really going to count this day as part of the itinerary, but if I would, it would actually be an 8 day itinerary instead of a week. Spend this limbo day trying to stay awake. Explore your surroundings and get that JR pass if that's what you're going to use. And if you have the time and the chance, then you should definitely tick off one of the many things to do and see in Tokyo. So let's get started with the actual itinerary, day one. So on day one, I suggest that you wake up nice and early ready for what this mega city has to offer. I'm not gonna go into any like specific itineraries here, but bear in mind that you're gonna have more time in Tokyo later on. Okay, so day two. After spending a day or a day and a half in this mega city, it's time to escape to the natural beauty of Hakone. Wake up nice and early to make your way to Hakone, which is famous for its onsen hot springs and its incredible natural beauty. So Hakone is actually one of the most popular destinations for tourists and Japanese locals alike. So I suggest that you try and book your accommodation well in advance or you might be out of luck. Try to stay in a traditional ryokan with hot spring baths and get to your hotel nice and early leaving your luggage at reception. Heading out to explore one of the many things that there is to do in the area, returning to your traditional accommodation to enjoy and relax by the onsen baths. Day 3. I suggest that you wake up nice and early in Hakone, enjoy a nice hot bath and enjoy traditional breakfast before you head to Kyoto, the next destination. Check out and keep your bag at reception to further explore the area if you have time. You might want to make use of the excellent, efficient luggage forwarding service that Japan has to offer. Simply speak to the hotel receptionist the day before and they'll let you know by what time you have to leave your luggage at reception. Try to arrive in Kyoto in time for your hotel's check-in and that will give you plenty of time to settle in and explore the surrounding areas. You'll probably have time to visit one of the many temples and attractions that Kyoto has to offer. Find a nice restaurant before your head hits the pillow. Day 4 Wake up nice and early and make your way to Fushini Inari Shrine before the hundreds of tourists arrive by the bus load. Bus tours with hundreds of tourists start arriving very early in the morning. So if you want to get that perfect Instagram shot, you better head there nice and early and have breakfast afterwards. Make the most of this day and try to get in as many of the shrines and attractions that Kyoto has to offer. Perhaps head into Kiyomizu Dera and the many traditional streets and temples that there are in the area before heading back to Yasaka Shrine and the Gihon district in the hope of finding a geisha. There is so much to see and do in Kyoto that you will certainly be left with an appetite to return. But if you do have extra time in the afternoon, then you might want to head to the famous Arashiyama bamboo forest because it's pretty cool. Day 5. Depending on how you feel, you might want to explore Kyoto a little bit further or my recommendation is that you head off nice and early to Nara. Nara is only 45 minutes away so it's very easy to get to and there are many many temples and really cool things to see like the bowing deers. After visiting the giant Buddha and exploring the many temples, take a detour to Osaka, which is only about 45 minutes away. Try to arrive in Osaka in the late afternoon 
getting to Dotonburi at sunset or when it's night time so that you can really get those shots with the neon illuminations. Don't forget to check out the crazy street food and the surrounding buzzing area before heading back to Kyoto which is about 45 minutes away. Day 6 and day 7. So this is the last leg of the trip. Head back to Tokyo for the last remaining two days. This will give you plenty of time to chill and take things at your own pace. Finish sightseeing and get in some extra shopping if you need to. If you feel that you need more time in Kyoto, then you might want to spend the morning exploring further before heading to Tokyo. Tokyo is definitely a mega city full of many beautiful and wonderful things to do. Lots of different gardens, different districts, each with their own unique feeling. At times, it might feel as if you're in a perpetual shopping center, so don't forget those credit cards. So, I've tried to give you what is a backbone for a trip, an itinerary that you can fit in yourself if you do a little bit of research. Check out many of my videos that I've made previously or many of the places that I've visited and you might get some ideas. There are many itineraries online with many more things to do and I know that I'm missing loads of places, I can tell you, I know, but I think that this really gives you a little bit of the taste of the most epic and popular destinations and some rural traditional accommodation along with plenty of things to see. Try to tweak it and fit it in as you see best. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this itinerary. I know I've missed many things, but hey, so let's try to gather together as a community to help out those people who might be visiting Japan for the very first time and only have one week to do it. Anyway, this has been a short video with some ideas and hopefully will set you in the right direction for your perfect trip to Japan. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe. See you soon. Bye.